In this video, I'm going to show you how to track your video footage inside of Adobe After Effects and then add holographic text into your scene. So let's get into it. So as you can see, we're inside of Adobe After Effects and this is our video footage that we want to track and add text into. So as you can see, there's just a very subtle orbit around. There's a little bit of camera movement that we need to address here. So in order to do that, we just first want to go into effects and presets and search for the 3D camera tracker. And then you just want to drop that onto your video footage. And After Effects, you're just going to take a few minutes to analyze the video footage and then create tracking points on top of the footage. And there you go. As you can see, you've got all of these crosses now living on the footage. And if we scrub through, you'll see some of those crosses appear, some of those disappear. But you just want to try and have a look to see if there's any crosses that stay there. So I'm keeping a close eye on these three here. If I scrub through, I can see they're always there. They don't disappear. So I'm just going to hover in between those three and that should generate this red target, which should be parallel with the table. I'm going to select that, right click and select create null and camera. So essentially it's taken all of this tracking data and it's converted that into a null object, which then I can attach text and objects to that 3D tracking data. So in order to do that, we first just want to create some text. So let's go up to the T icon. We'll create some text. Let's go Brooker, for example. And then you just want to come down to here and you want to convert this into 3D text. And if you're not seeing the 3D option, by the way, then just select toggle switches slash modes to make this button appear. So that will convert that into 3D text. And if we play this back, you can see that is tracked into the scene, but it looks like it's too far in the foreground. At the moment, it looks like it's hovering somewhere around here. So I actually want to send that back into the space. There we go. So I'm just going to go into that text. We'll open up this button here. So we'll select the drop down arrow, go into transform. And then you can see you've got position. The first one is going to be left and right. The second one is going to be up and down. And then the third one is going to be forwards or backwards. It does just look like we're scaling up and down, but we're actually sending it back into the space. If we play this back, you can see that's now living a little bit further back into the scene. I would love for this to hover just above the keyboard. So I'm going to send this back a little bit further. And then I'm going to have to increase the scale because I've sent it so far back into the scene. Let's play this back now. There you go, that looks a little bit better. Although I would like to send it just a little further back, so I'm just gonna keep pushing that position back and then I'll increase the scale to compensate for that. And we'll play this back. And that looks like it is now hovering in the space. At the moment though, the perspective of the text is wrong. You can see everything in this table is kind of angled in a specific direction, but this text just looks very flat. So I'm gonna go into X, Y, and Z rotation and I'm just going to angle this a little bit towards the camera. There we go. So that instantly looks a bit better. I can also angle it around so that it's parallel to this table as well. So that looks a lot better Then this rotation. The third one is just going to be our standard rotation. And to be fair, I think it's fine at zero. So I'm just going to leave that one there. But then I want to add a little bit of separation between the text and the table. So I'm just going to bring the position up. So that's the second position. And let's play this back. There we go. That does look cool. Although I think I do want to take this a little bit higher again. So we'll just push this up. And truth be told, I think that's actually a little bit too far back into the scene. So I'm just going to bring this a little closer in towards the camera. And then I'll just pull this down a touch. So now you can see we've got the text tracked into the scene. And that does look really cool. But at the moment, there's no form of holographic text appearing. So in order to get this into holographic text, there's a few steps that we need to take. So first of all, we want to press T on the keyboard to load opacity and we'll just pull the opacity down a little bit. So let's pull this down to around 80 or 90 percent, just enough where you can start to see items appearing through the text. So somewhere around here. Then we want to go ahead and add some glow to this. So you can either add the glow directly to the text so you can go affect some presets glow and drop this directly onto the text. But as you can see in my example, After Effects is being a little buggy on me today. So I'm just going to delete that and we'll go the other option. We'll go into layer, new adjustment layer. Then we'll just create a mask 
around this. So go into the ellipse mask, draw an ellipse mask around the text. We'll create a brand new keyframe on the mask path and we'll just move the mask path so that it follows the text. Now from here, we can go into curves and uh, we can drop curves onto that adjustment layer and we can increase the brightness a little bit. Let's just pull this down a touch. Then we can go into the blue channel and we can add a little bit of a blue glow around this. Then we can just pull the green down a little bit. Just mess with these color channels here. Make this look exactly how you want this to look. And then once you're happy with that, we'll go into mask feather and we'll increase the mask feathering. So as you can see, there's a nice soft glow around that text now appearing. This is off and this is on. So it's very subtle, but it does add a nice little bit of glow. You can also add this behind the text if it's starting to affect the text a little bit, but I do quite like it on because it does affect that text layer. You can make this more intense, by the way. You can go into that blue channel and you can really make those blues pop a little bit, or you can go into the RGB and you can affect the RGB channel to add a little bit more glow. It's completely up to you. And of course, as well at the moment, this is just glued into the scene. It's just stuck there. So you can actually make this hover if you wanted to. So at the very beginning, we're going to press P on the keyboard with the text layer selected to load up position. We'll create a brand new keyframe on position. Then we'll go across to maybe the one second mark and we'll create a new keyframe again. Then we'll go to the two second mark, new keyframe, three second, new keyframe, four second, new keyframe. And then we'll just go to the end and create another keyframe again. And at in between each one of these keyframes, we'll just move the position up or down. There you go, like this. You could alternatively add a wiggle expression onto this if you wanted to. But if expressions are a little bit complicated or a little bit scary for you, then this option works completely fine as well. And of course, as well, if you highlight all of these keyframes, right click on one of them and select keyframe assistant, easy ease, that will create a really nice soft animation. If I solo this layer, you can really see this text in action. There you go. So you can see that's now hovering around in the space. So if we see this in the scene amongst the other layers, you can see now we've got this really cool floating effect. Of course, though, if this action is too fast for you, if you want this to be more of a slow hover, then all you need to do is just increase the gaps between those keyframes so that it slows out that motion. Now, when we render this out and we play this back, that should be a lot softer now. So that does look really awesome, but let's take that a step further. Let's actually add a little bit of distortion onto this. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new adjustment layer again. So layer new adjustment layer. Then we'll go into effect and presets and search for turbulent displacement. So turbulent displace, drop that onto your second adjustment layer. Then you just want to go into evolution, create a brand new keyframe and making sure you're at the beginning, scroll through to the end and pull that evolution round to one rotation. So somewhere around 360. Then you just want to go ahead and pull the size down to a much smaller number. So let's go for, there you go, somewhere around 20. And we can also pull the amount down as well to make that more subtle. There you go. And now from here, you can just go ahead and create a mask around that text layer. We'll go into the adjustment layer, go into masks, mask one, pull that mask feather all the way up. And now when we play this back, you can see you've got this slightly cool distorted look to the text. Of course, though, if this was actually in the scene, then this would be casting light onto the table. At the moment, you can't see really any light cast onto the table. So let's go ahead and fix that. We'll create another new adjustment layer. So layer, new adjustment layer. And now we'll just draw a mask on the table. So we'll just go around here. There you go. So the light would be cast across here. Now you just want to open up masks. We'll create a brand new keyframe on mask path. And then you just want to scroll through and make sure that this mask doesn't fall off the table. Make sure it's contained within the table. So just follow that camera movement around. There we go. That looks good. 
And now from here, we can go into curves and we can drop curves onto adjustment layer three, and then we can increase the brightness. Then we can increase the blue amount as well, because it's going to cast a blue light. We'll drop this underneath the text so that it's not affecting the text layer. And of course, we'll increase the moss feather to really blend this into the scene. Now, because we've got this up and down motion, the light would get less intense and more intense depending on how close it was to the table. So you just want to scroll through. And as you can see, this is its lowest point. So when it's in this point, your opacity would be 100% to create a new keyframe there. If we go back to the beginning, it's gone up a bit. So we'll pull the opacity down to around 80 because it's going higher. There'll be less light on the table. Then we'll go across and we we'll do the same thing. So if that comes lower, I guess that's quite a high point. So that can go low again. Then it comes close to the table. So we can increase that again to 100 and then it bobs back up at the end. So we'll pull this back down again. So that light is going to get less or more intense depending on how close it is to the table. So feel free to get creative, explore the other plugins inside of Adobe After Effects to take this to the next level. But this is the basics of how you would track your footage, add text into your scene, and then turn that text into holographic text inside of Adobe After Effects. So thank you ever so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate your support and hopefully I will see you in the next video. See you there.